Hey, Reed. Hi, how's it going? Uh, going very well. Um, uh, say hello. Say hi to Adam and everybody, Reed. Hi, everyone. Can you see me? I can't see you. Am I supposed to see you? Uh, uh, you're not supposed to see us, but we don't. We should have video for you. Do you yeah. have your webcam on? Yes. Do you see me? No. no. Hold on one second. It might just be a Skype delay. But thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show tonight. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry I missed you when I was in Vegas. Oh, I, we all get you on set for the protest. I had my day off then. Yeah, oh, lucky you. That was it was but that was the most fun. I mean, that was I, absolutely fun. I'm sure the swimming pool scenes were were more fun for others, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, for, for fabulous. <laughs> Yeah. Reed, you did wonderful. Oh, well, thank you so much. Can you guys see me? I think I turned my camera on. No, uh, still not. Negative. <laughs> I saw it load frack a set, half a second, then it just... Hold on. Suspense. Yeah, well, this keyboard guys, we talk. <laughs> I mean, Reed, well, would you like to describe your character to Adam? I mean, I, I could say a, a lot as a, as a re reading the book, but how about you describe your character? Who is yeah, Lorna? Of Lormer, yeah, so I play the character of Lormer, and Lormer is very mysterious, and she meets the lead character, Elliot, in The Secret Underground, and at the time, Elliot's kind of closed off, and Lormer basically gets him to come out of his shell, and she shows him the underground mall, and then she takes him on this huge, huge, what would you call it? I Adventure? Guess, journey. Yeah, to find his father. Meanwhile, Lormer is looking for her father, because... Well, my character's father, actually. You'll find out why I'm looking for my father. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> but, Agreed. Um, we're basically both looking for our fathers, and we basically fall in love. There's a nice little love story. Um, and then I go swimming through a pool, half naked. So you should tune in. <laughs> <laughs> how, very how very eloquently put. Now, let's cut straight to the point, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I mean, we discussed this before, but I mean philosophically what do you think this film is about i mean you know from discussions with neil with everybody who's been on the hardcore agorists you know that you've met on set like what do you think this thing's about philosophically i think philosophically the film is about agorism and an example of how the idea can be applied into science fiction films so it has a really strong science fiction base but it also gets a political um point of view across as well well it's almost like the the i mean if science fiction you know, we we describe science. We use the term science fiction to describe futuristic fantasies of science. Not you know immediate. You know, very rarely is is it you know this is uh, fiction based on current science. And in, in a way, it seems like this is political fiction. In the same way, it would be science fiction if we applied the terms similarly. It's not political fiction in the sense that like. You know, it's uh, current day political drama or, or anything boring like that. But it talks about the, I mean, the, the conclusion of it is a certain fantasy of what's possible. Yeah, that's true. It, it really, it, it's funny that you say that. It really is um, an example of what's possible. And what's great about it is, yeah, it does have the political um, fundamentals in it, but it really has something for everyone. And you're able to get swept up into a story and, and not, it's not like, political views are like shoved down your face, but it's kind of like by the end, you come to this really nice, beautiful realization of what the core of the film is about. You know what I mean? So were you politically inclined before coming to work on this project? No, not necessarily. I, I was drawn to the film because I really loved the all the characters that were involved, and I loved the storyline, and Neil's writing is beautiful. It has this very, very fast-paced, very raw, very edgy... Um, dialogue to it and that's what drew me to the project in the first place but i was definitely i definitely learned a lot about, about the fundamentals of the film while we were filming it yeah and i mean there's so and the one thing that we me and adam have been talking about recently on the show is like you know our kind of our stories from behind the scenes and i mean for uh, for both of us i mean there are just so many stories they're all funny they're all true oh, but so many <laughs> yeah it's just like literally like which one pops to your mind that's just you know like what you could say from behind the scenes was like your best moment, like one of the funniest moments on behind the scenes while we were making oh the film. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, Kevin, there's so many. Um, I know it's so I hard. Say, <laughs> I really loved, I think it was the last night of shooting. We went to the, the, what's it called? The gun firing range. Oh yeah. Um, the firing range. Yeah. The front yeah, side, right? Yeah. The front side. They were like, Reed, they were like, you're going to shoot a gun. And I was like, 
I'm, they're like, have you ever shot a gun before? I was like, no. And next thing I know, they got this guy named Tito to teach me how to fire an MP5. And I'm just <laughs> uh, getting off rounds and getting the hang of it. And it was fun. That was really fun. And then also um, the scene where I had to swim laps in the pool when Lorimer and Elliot first meet. There's this whole scene where I'm supposed to pop up out of the water and in slow-mo I'm like, pulling my hair out of my face and uh, leading up to that they show me swimming laps and they had this underwater camera that I was um, uh, swimming in front of that was like following me up and down the pool and I was a really big competitive swimmer when I was growing up. I was the number one breaststroker in all of my county and... Well when you say it like that. <laughs> yeah I know. Well swimming laps this time definitely... Adam. <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> it definitely showed me that I was a bit out of shape. But uh, I think I pulled it off. What do you think? I, I, let me just say this. It's from a good thing the, my girlfriend's not co-hosting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, you'd be in the doghouse, brother. <laughs> I, I, I saw a good bit of the... I mean, Neil showed me... Uh, like I, I saw some of the footage, and from what I could see, no, it looked great on film. Everything looked great. Good. I'm yeah. so glad. I haven't seen any. I've seen some. I mean, right now, I mean, Neil is... I, I have to say this, all of us on the thing, like Neil is being very, very quiet about this film. I mean, he is, he is, he's being very Hitchcock about it. I think, uh, and we did everything but the oath on set to basically swear we will not disclose too much of the film. <laughs> we did everything but the oath. Yeah, it was, there, there were just so many funny ones. I think the funniest one is when I, uh, when I, uh, first met, uh, both, you, Garrett, and Christian, on the first day I was there, I mean, literally, I'm just sitting in the chair. I, Reed just comes up, and she goes, Hi, I don't recognize you. Hi, my, my name's Reed. I'm like, uh, Hi, I'm Kevin. You know, like, <laughs> she was just, she was like, like, everybody just, like, accepted me in, like, just so quickly. I was just, I was amazed. I was just like, wow, everybody's very friendly. <laughs> yeah, it was such a fun set to work on. It was, it was, what was funny is that we had two weeks filming in December, and then we broke for the holidays, and yeah. then we had... About three more weeks in um, January, and it was really nice because I went home to visit family for the holidays, and it was I like missed everyone on set, so it was so nice being able to come back in January, and it was a nice little breather. That way, like no one got tired of each other. Everyone was just like really in love with the work and what we were there to do, and it was great. I have no, I have not a single bad thing to say about anyone I worked with on set. Everyone was super fun to work with and super professional, but we also were able to have a really good time. Yeah, do you remember the funniest thing? Um, it was at the Agora Mall scene when we were at Boulevard Mall. Do you remember the dueling walk-ins? Me and uh, Alex Noble. No, which part was that? Remember when uh, Alex? Remember when Neil was laughing? He uh, he cast Alex in that role with the mask on, and he was doing oh, uh, his, his Christopher Walken weird. impersonation. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh. Alex Noble, we actually, he, we had, um, our makeup artist, <laughs> our makeup guy ended up playing it cause he was just perfect for it. He put the, he fit the part so well and he came on set and he had this huge monologue and then he did it. What kind of accent did he do it in? He, he did a Christopher Walken. And the funny thing is, I don't, I wondered if Reed and Christopher Christian, Walken is an accent unto itself. Is that, oh, majorly. Is that okay. No, no, yeah. literally yeah. me and him were goofing around. Lorimer was sitting, uh, Lorimer, you know, was as Reed was turning into Lorimer yeah, in the in the <laughs> chair. We were making a a uh, me and I was walking by and I just went, you know, this just it happens to be that you know we're pressed for time, Alex. So you know, can we please hurry it up? And he just he and I just kept going back and forth doing Christopher Walken impersonations. Neil walks in and just hears us going, and we were going back and forth, back and forth, line for line. He's looked over at Alex. He goes, Alex. I need you to get. I need you to get over here right now. <laughs> like, I had the perfect thing for you. <laughs> and That's so yeah, he got a, he got an extra in the movie on that. Well, yeah, Reed, it turned out really well. Even though we don't have your camera working, we have you on screen. Yeah, we have you on screen here. Oh, what picture? I hope I look okay. Ah. Charlie, where did you get this? You look from? great. I got it from images.google.com. <laughs> right to slideshow. Google.com. <laughs> <laughs> We do what the Google Reed, tells us around it's here. It's good. Yeah. It's okay, Reed. Don't worry about it. You look fantastic. You look great. You guys. <laughs> Although for the bikini shot, you're gonna have to see the movie. Actually, it's in the yeah. trailer. It's in the trailer. It's in the trailer. Yeah. It's probably in the trailer. Yeah, you guys are gonna have to watch the the movie for all the the good stuff between me and Elliot, or Elliot and I. Excuse me. Yeah, I. 
it was it was interesting. The two of you on set were, I mean, it literally, I mean, I must say, Neil's casting was wonderful because the chemistry between these two was just absolutely perfect for the film. I mean, literally, Reed and Christian made this film, literally. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's so nice of you to say. Yeah, Christian and I had a great time. Um, yeah. We actually traveled to Vegas together. Um, that was the first time we, well, we met once. Neil came to Lo- uh, Los Angeles and we all had dinner together. And then we traveled to Las Vegas together the first time. And we really got to know each other. And we just had a great time. Really great time. He's really fun to work with. Well, Reed, we, we've got a few other guests yeah. that are going to be joining us from the cast tonight. Uh, but I, who, who's, who's, who do we have queued up here, Kevin? Um, well, right now it looks like we only got um, Adam holding in. So actually, let me uh, real quick before we finish, Reed, um, do you remember the uh, Hogan's Alley scene that we were uh, working on with the green screen at, at the mall yes. as well? Do you remember uh, what prop was used in, uh, in that scene? The one I I pull I I I should tell the story I guess if you remember the Bill of Rights that uh, oh, you God. read I literally had this thing from a Penn and Teller show from years ago and I handed it to her it literally she's reading off it in the film the security dish remember the metal detector one that sets off the metal detector mm-hmm. if you go to the airport wearing it so the Bill of Rights sets it off and she like it's really interesting it's just the the way they were doing it in the scene it's just Awesome. And I read and I read it off the, your little pocket, your little pocket uh, amendment thingy, my bobber. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Bill of Rights, but hey, I like that better. <laughs> well, no, the Bill of Rights was on your pocket, your, your pocket thingy, my bobber. This like you had this like metal plate that you kept in your pocket that had the Bill of Rights on it. It was fabulous. Oh, I, those kind of bobbers. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is the thing that you carry through a TSA checkpoint to set it off. Exactly. So that they have to read the bill of rights. Yeah, there's a series of them. Penn and Teller did this as their latest gag for their recent show. And we, uh, I just happened to have it in my pocket. And uh, it was just, it was so, it was so funny. It's just like, she's like, yeah, but I don't remember. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. I said, wait a minute, I have it right here. And actually she just goes, she goes, you carry the Constitution in your pocket? I said, a free person always carries the Bill of Rights in his pocket. <laughs> I don't know. I've got it. I've got it somewhere on my cell phone, but um, I didn't. I didn't sign no you social contract. Have it tattooed on your body. Um, oh. I have. I have better stuff tattooed yeah. on my body, actually. <laughs> the Bill of Rights. Come on. Yes, we. Well, we know about that, but I mean, you know. Tattooed on your girlfriend. Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but I'm sure she'll appreciate the suggestion. Reed, what what do you hope to be the impact of this movie? You know what? I hope the movie. I mean, I hope the movie is able to get across its political views. But I also just really hope people are able to go into the theater and sit back and enjoy the the story and be swept away and actually learn something in the process of being entertained. Outstanding, Kevin. Absolutely. All right. Well, Reed, listen. We must press on. But it's been good talking with you. Um, we must part. Thank you guys so much for having sadly me. Sadly, so. Reed, thank you so much for joining us. Greatly appreciate it. We'll be seeing you at the premiere, I'm sure. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Adam. Bye, guys. Later. Bye. Oh, my gosh. It's a revolution. That was just the start. We've got some hashes, so most of these are going to be a bubble extraction hash, y'all. Please lend me your wisdom. I have watched in awe as you have grown from stubble to what you have become. 